Hello Scorpio, welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. Scorpio, we're doing all wild and unknown this week. We're gonna work with the wild and unknown oracle and tarot cards. We're gonna look at your energy and energy outside of you and what these two energies are creating. And what am I gonna start with Scorpio? I'm gonna start with the wild unknown oracle deck. All right, let's see what they have to say to you, Scorps. I have this almost like a dual message here. I kind of see energy that's like incredibly, incredibly supportive and protected of you and protective of you right now while you're sort of doing something. I want to say there's two, there's two meanings I get with these cards, right? Okay. First we have the dragon, which is actually appearing in what your energy and another energy outside of you are creating. The dragon for me, um, I kind of get it as the eye of God. And it also, like, it's the all-seeing eye. It's the conscious, it's the subconscious within us that is trying to um, transmute into a more conscious state and seeing ourselves truly and fully, innerly and outwardly. Um, and then just, like, universe, like the connection that we have with the universe and how that sees us and we see it and we're all connected. Um and then you could even look at it too as like a higher power. It's just an energy that's existed before even we really even became conscious. So it's a really powerful energy for one thing that's being created between your energy and another energy. And um, but then it's also associated like these spirit cards are also associated with chakras. And so this is associated with the third chakra, um, which for me is an area where we really develop our confidence, right? But I think that makes sense for everything I've described when you truly see yourself inwardly and outwardly and how everything is connected and how you're connected in that, you start to develop a sense of um, confidence in yourself and in the world around you, um, right? So that's interesting because then this is the, the golden egg too, is kind of like the beauty about hatching that out of yourself. Everything that I've sort of described in the... Um, and the dragon but so this is a, one of the underlines which is interesting you have two underlines you have the golden egg followed by the crocodile which to me is also coming up as like this ancient sort of reptilian energy that um and they would have eggs wouldn't they like both these species would actually have eggs so the whole thing is really connected um but this is like your heart chakra area and it's hatching these these energies out of you it's really really beautiful i, I want to say um, your energy is as if the universe and yourself are watching you hatch, you know, and there's a real protection that's being put and placed around you in that. Uh, I do feel like the crocodile is also representing like she would guard her nest. She would guard those eggs, wouldn't she? She would sit in the shallows of the water while the eggs were on shore and protect them from any predators. Because this is the energy that you pulled out. You pulled out the earthworm. There's some incredible potential within you that hasn't been released yet. It's getting really close, to be honest. You have the Ace of Cups, the Daughter of Swords, and the Six of Pentacles. Um, it's almost as if you you have the feeling within you. And, uh, you know, this reading is very much about, like, just kind of... It's a very spiritual reading, as opposed to... I mean, they've been at either end of the gamut this week, honestly, whether it's like a personal relationship with you or someone or something complicated or even something more spiritual, but yours is like hitting it pretty hard, like this spiritual energy. Although when I get over to the energy that is outside of you, that introduces something quite different. And maybe that's why there's such a protective energy that it's kind of being created around you. To honest to goodness, I wanna say that your spirit guides, um, your guardian angels, what, whatever you know that could be to you, is definitely protecting you. There's this, um, right underneath the dragon is the Seven of Wands, the Empress, 
and then the daughter of pentacles this is on this is like mother and child energy it's really beautiful it's um it's uh, the purity the innocence uh the example of uh, life in itself, right? Like, write this through, like, um, new life is birthed through the mother and the mother nurtures the child. Like, it's just a very uh, Mother Earth kind of feeling right in here. And look at it, it's like just so protected. It's just the Seven of Wands. This dragon energy is coming in and protecting it somehow. Um, I, well, somehow, right? Like, <laughs> get into the explanations of how or why that's happening, but I think it has something to do with the interconnectedness of everything. And seeing yourself in that and hatching something out again a really innocent beautiful energy is the underlying the daughter of cups and the moon it's sort of like this sweet innocence navigating an unknown going through the darkness being protected through the darkness and even the darkness is you know what would be like inside an egg or inside a womb it's not the same as hatching out you're like hatching out because it's even like any sort of type of fetus um, of any animal that we see inside an egg or inside a womb is always curled right up inside itself and there's all this that needs to expand that hasn't expanded yet. Now, the energy outside of you, I want to say, right, it's got the dragonfly. When the dragonfly first came out without any support of the tarot cards, I thought, is this energy trying to understand itself really well? Like, is it trying to do something that I feel like Scorpio is actually doing? Um, and it's as if you're about to unravel that with the earthworm? Or is this energy trying to understand Scorpio? Is it trying to understand and see something about Scorpio? Which, now with the tarot cards that are out, I think that's the kind of the gist of the message there. Because there's something going on about you, right? That needs to be unraveled. You're unraveling something within yourself that maybe you're just being really protective of even because you're trying to understand this about you before you let it go out into the world. Um, you know, it's like a little baby bird that hatches out of a out of the egg. When it gets to the stage that it's ready to, almost ready to jump out of the nest, it does all of its practice um, in the nest. It just jumps up and it flaps its wings. It strengthens those muscles on its own without being in an environment that could be dangerous to it, right? Because it doesn't know how to manage its new gifts yet. So it's kind of something like that. Um, so, but this dragonfly is definitely trying to see through illusions. Mm, look at this. Is this, look at this energy, the four pentacles, the seven of swords and the ace of wands. <clears throat> I gotta say the seven of swords has come up so much the last little while. This is, I really want to say, this is an energy that is not A, moving towards you, um, B, that is incredibly self-contained, incredibly, incredibly self-contained. So I don't know if it senses your even desire to protect yourself or that the universe is protecting you and respecting that. I mean, I don't want to always just look at the Seven of Swords and say somebody's being sneaky here. I will say that somebody is... Um, Trying to understand you from a distance, that's for sure. Trying to understand you from a distance, and I think they're getting some sort of understanding here with the Ace of Wands. Um, I'm gonna clarify that Seven of Swords. Just as it looks to me on the surface, I would say that there's some sort of um, holding back in sort of respect to whatever is going on with you. Because it's obvious that there's something unraveling, something opening up, something hatching um, of you that is it's just this sense of purity and sweetness and beauty to like you know when you see mother earth, earth and it's <clears throat> i mean mother earth can be incredibly intense and catastrophic um and heartbreaking as just as soon as she brings this life in she can snatch it away in some of the most brutal examples of that um so but this is the sweetness. This is this is Mother Earth. You're sort of like, well, Empress energy. It is like mother and child. And even yourself, like birthing something out of yourself also. If you are a mother and you have a child, if you're um, a father and you have a child, I just want to say like you're really... Sorry, I had a smoothie. I have it here. And there's a little like seed that got stuck in my braces. But we had to remove that. Um... Even if you are like a father and a child here, you're just really the, the beauty of your um your nurturing energy to yourself and the things around you, it's showing up like Empress. It's gorgeous. Um also 
it could be the way like even if you're dealing with your own child um it's just gorgeous it's just gorgeous gorgeous energy and it's protected it's seen it is seen through a universal eye and uh yeah being protected so let's let's shuffle this out this is interesting i just almost like keeping the devil busy or the devil may have been trying to keep you busy something holding back um a new beginning with that butterfly and devil in the tower let's do one more split where is this going there's the devil still going away the devil and the um two of wands okay the dragonfly i'm gonna go right to that that's the one that i really want to understand for you the dragonfly the dragonfly oh temperance this energy is it's tempered it's patient there's a gentleness to it too like even a dragonfly is a, quite a capable little creature the way it can fly and hover and do all sorts of things it goes through transformations as well so this could be somebody who's also gone through their own transformation at some point maybe they're even alchemizing that as well trying to understand themselves um you got something wrapped up here maybe this isn't transformation maybe this is just uh something that's already transformed in you but i want to say that there is some sense of transformation going on with this energy outside of you um the Four of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles, the Mother of Pentacles, and the Nine of Cups. Wow. I kind of feel like this energy has an opportunity here. Right? Well, there's an Ace. It's holding back on an opportunity. There's a dream or a wish here. Now, now, you're coming across, right, like mother and child. It's not, it's, it's the empress. And then there's the little doe, the daughter, the page of pentacles. And in the card that they've pulled out here with this opportunity is the mother and child. The um, mother of pentacles with the little doe. And then the nine of cups, like a dream or a wish. Let's keep going. But so far... I want to like I want to see what the seven of swords is and what their great idea is but it looks like this energy is holding back on doing anything because it has a dream it wants to perhaps fulfill and you may be part of this dream I don't know the seven of swords <clears throat> the seven of swords jeez that tried to fly away. The dragon caught it. I'm not kidding you. Landed like this on the table. Okay. And the dragon caught it. The six of cups. This is someone from your past. So someone you know. But I mean that. Well, I guess it would make sense. Yeah. I want to say anyone can be from your past. From even like yesterday. Somebody you met yesterday. They're from your past. You just met them. Somebody you met just before you came to this video. <laughs> They're from your past because this is now the present. But um, somebody who could also feel like they have a very strong soul connection to you. This could be somebody that you've known from the past, right? This could be Six of Cups. Nostalgia. It could be nostalgia. Somebody could have nostalgia. They're hiding their nostalgia for you. What is the Ace of Wands? What is the Ace of Wands? I kind of want, I like the way that Six of Cups, like it literally tried to fly off the table and it landed. You just had to see it. It was almost like the dragon had, like, it was like a magnet and it pulled that card down. The Ace of Wands. The Strength card, okay. It is, the idea here is to hold back, hold back, hold back. I wonder if this energy is watching you create some sort of a dream and an opportunity for yourself and it's holding back. So I'm going to say so far it looks pretty supportive. This energy doesn't look like it's looking to interfere with you, at least physically. I don't know if there's anything going on energetically. It doesn't seem like it. Mm, I'm going to go to you, the earthworm. 
right? You have the Ace of Cups, the Daughter or Page of Swords, and the Six of Pentacles. This could even be unraveling some sort of um, potential expression, like how to turn your emotions into physical give and takes, consequences, everything, you know, like with the Six of Pentacles, but the Earthworm. <clears throat> this is an untapped or unreleased potential in you. The Earthworm. The Son of Cups. This is moving with your heart here. <coughs> I kind of wonder if this, this energy, the way the dragon caught, I'm wondering if this is someone that um, you are trying to move towards, but you're witnessing even this person going through some sort of transformation. This person could even be hiding from the, um, the soul contract that they have with you, the way the dragon caught that, almost like, no, no, no. Because you've got, you've got romance written all over your heart, but it's all bound up. And when I say romance, this could just be like looking at life through like the beauty that life is, the dreaminess that can, that it can be. But you do seem to have an intent of your heart here. The Ace of Cups. Eight of Swords. So again, there's the reason for something being bound up. It's not, it's just not the right time for like some sort of rebirth to occur. This, I'm almost seeing this egg like it's the last one in the nest and the crocodile sort of sitting here thinking, okay, I gotta guard you and keep track of all these other little ones. Are you gonna hatch? What's going on here? So. The Daughter of Swords, you're watching, waiting, watching for something. The Three of Swords, observing, observing heartache, understanding heartache. That seems like a very Scorpionic story. The Six of Pentacles, there's Justice, the Sun, and the Ten of Swords, Five of Wands at the bottom. There's something that has to be corrected in the 3D. There's an awful lot of energy on this table, but then when we finally get to, you know, for you, this pentacle energy, it's as if something needs to be corrected here. The Justice of the Sun Like coming to an end. The Six of Pentacles, the sun coming to a painful end. This is where I feel like now I have Scorpio. Now I have Scorpio. Things just got really deep, more complicated. Everything on the surface looked pretty, wow, yeah, okay. But this is observing some sort of heartache. Is there some sort of heartache that you have to go through? Is this some sort of past enlightenment that has come to a full circle here and you're finding yourself again? But is it you or are you observing this in someone else? This is such a... A funny reading, you know, at first I thought the energy over here was trying to understand you. But now as I get deeper, Scorpio, I think you're trying to understand something outside of you. You could be witnessing somebody else. And I'm saying this because it's the, the daughter of swords. And she's seen some sort of a heartache, observing a heartache, a heartbreak. Someone going through a conflict between their heart and their mind here, which is also interesting because we're talking about confidence, heart chakra, the third and fourth heart chakra here too. It could still be the witness to yourself. I think this could go either way. Some of you could be witnessing something within yourself and there's something in the 3D that is breaking down 
Um, it's kind of like being split apart with the Six of Pentacles because it's just like this even divide with that card. And then even Justice is this even divide in that card. But the Sun to the Ten of Swords, this is... If anything, I want to say because the Sun reflects our truth and clarity in life, um, but also our like actualization of self. There's got to be something that has either put a pause or a stop in that self-actualization that has to be witnessed and looked at that's quite painful to look at. Or, and, and well, okay, and even still, because I want to say it's almost like I would see the world card coming in next. Like there's a cycle here that at one time would have been the sun, but then that coming to an end. the dragon is protecting the dragon is protecting the mother and child i wonder too like is this the mother and child over here <laughs> no, i'm not sure How is the, okay the dragon the tower There's like some sort of divine intervention. That's a divine intervention. The tower. The tower, the moon, and the two of swords. Interesting, right? The moon is an underline with the daughter of cops. <clears throat> Something's happened here. There's been some sort of a divine intervention. And the only way anybody can lead themselves through it is with their intuition. Nobody's being shown anything here. The dragon is purposely not showing things. There's, a, I don't know what this is. There's almost, it's starting to develop like a heavier karmic energy to it. As if all parties in some sort of situation need to um need to make choices based on where they sit and stand right now energetically intellectually heart spacely um without having any idea of what their outcomes are because outcomes would um, influence actions and those actions cannot be influenced yeah, this dragon energy is pretty strong right now. It's broken everything down. I'm not showing you a thing. You need to figure your way out of it. Okay. The seven of wands. This is like protection. This could even be protecting energies from one another so that they all equally make their own choices. <clears throat> dragon is protecting is protecting or protecting from the Three of Cups. Getting together with some sort of energy. Rejoicing. The dragon is coming in like a really heavy foot right now. The Empress and the Daughter of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles. Wow, the dragon is protecting this kind of mother and child energy. And it's um, giving it, I would call it like a safe haven even. The Daughter of Pentacles, which is the page. It landed right on top of the 10, the Hierophant and the 9. These two are connected. There's really strong energy here. I mean, this is a divine intervention, and I'm not sure who it's supporting. I don't think the dragon is supporting anyone. It's supporting... I, don't, I wouldn't say that. It's definitely supporting the energy of mother and child here. The golden egg. Okay, how I would... I'm going to continue to describe this because the dragon to me with the cards that have come out and what I'm seeing on the table... 
This is the most significant energy, is what these two energies are creating. So I'm not even sure which side of the story you're on here, but I'm just reading the energy. It's all I can do. I'm not trying to like <laughs> take sides or anything. And I feel like it's important that I don't. This dragon is just, it feels like it's just um, it's seen like right through me. It's intense. Like you can't, I can't lie. I can't, I just got to tell you what I'm seeing here right now. Um, <clears throat> if at any point you feel like your energy needs to be flipped or that you encompass both these energies at different points in time, that's fine as well. But I'm just going to read it as it is. The dragon has created some sort of divine intervention here. This divine intervention has broken down some sort of a structure, okay? And it's broken it down in a way, it's broken it down because... It was not, it was going beyond. It almost has this energy of going beyond um, some types of personal choices that were, would have be, been, would have been made by people um, that were not in alignment with higher good or even people's fate and destiny. Like ego, I want to say with the tower and the ten of swords too, right? Like the ego is being broken down here because the ego has surpassed any at some point in time here some point in time in this this timeline the ego would have been um taking full control of the soul's journey and this had to stop like this could not continue to go on but then when you you hit that tower with the moon and the, the, the two of swords there's only one way to get through this and you're going to hit an awful lot of unknowns in the journey after the tower, you and anyone else involved with it. Um, it's like, we need to really sort out, like even with the justice, we need to be clear here about the universe feels it needs to be very clear. The I God energy, karma needs to be very clear about what people's intents are here and what their intents are, intentions are when they are met with catastrophe possibly and darkness what do you choose to do at that like this is a very heavy reading um now what's coming up here right now take it as you will um there is some sort of witness that you're having in this experience okay you might be with this this could even be someone that you have strong feelings for that has gone through something very catastrophic um i'm feeling a little more inclined towards that because you are showing up as a witness which is funny a witness in this justice so you may have some sort of karmic connection to this person and it may be a soul tie i'm feeling more strongly like this energy over here with the dragonfly is somehow what the dragon is protecting because it's showing up as the mother and child. So you might even somehow bear witness in even just energetically, spiritually to this, whether it is even like, I don't know, it could be, it could even be like maybe something really wrong has happened to someone that you, you love and you have to go on the witness stand for it. I mean, if you're not doing that in the physical on earth, I honestly feel like that you have done it in the spirit realm. Like you've kind of stepped up spiritually and your soul has spoken up because you've witnessed something. Like you've witnessed something, something that is wrong here. There's something wrong here because this is not right. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm having trouble wrapping my head around because this there's some sort of, self-actualization that's coming to an end so either there's the witness energy here is is stepping up because the eye of god has come in and said something not right here when we got the sun and justice how is this ending in the ten of swords what the fuck is going on down there <laughs> what are you guys doing so something coming in and saying yo everyone come to the way everyone come to the meeting room no actually it's one at a time Tell me your story. What's going on here? This is a fascinating, fascinating energy. Um, you, A, I want to say you are not able to move your heart forward. And that could be part of the problem here. Why the dragon has stepped up. Because you are likely, possibly meant to move your heart forward. And something is blocking it. 
there might be something that you're meant to build in this mother and child energy or with this mother and child energy. Um, it could be somebody had some sort of path here that was supposed to be self-actualized to a point. They were supposed to understand themselves, follow a journey of brightness and enlightenment, and then that was supposed to end. That ego was supposed to be, supposed to be broken down quickly and painfully. Um, but because it's almost like the, the soul would have signed up. If this is, if this is something that is sitting in like karmic balance here for that experience to happen, the soul would have had to have signed up for that. It could be you. I want to say it could be you. It's either you or something that you're witnessing. And the point of that was the, how do you make your choices at that point? When you think you know everything about yourself and has been completely torn away in the most almost catastrophic way possible. How, what do you do? Who do you become? <laughs> so this mother and child energy through the catastrophe, I am seeing sort of like a judgment call from the dragon and it is giving the mother and child energy um this is providing like i would describe it like a cave a cave or you know so, something i'm just seeing this uh this deer in this doe and like um an asteroid comes and hits the earth and everything is like the uh, the impulse the the impulse no what is this? the explosion the explosion and the shock waves the shock wave of that energy and the it, it's just like breaking everything down but this mother and child sort of being guided to this this underground cave which somehow protects them i don't know it's it's here it's honestly here and the hierophant is guiding this it's so because the hierophant and the dragon are working together which feels very powerful because that's how that should always be. But a lot of times mankind is working against the dragon to try to control, to try to create hierophant energy of its own, right? So, okay, this crocodile. The magician is just sitting, is sitting, it's manifesting, it's hanging on to something, the golden egg. What's in this golden egg? The Ten of Wands and the Death card. This is a very prol. This dragon, this crocodile has been um, almost putting itself in jeopardy, protecting this egg. This egg is taking forever to hatch to the point where the hatchling inside i want to say is at some sort of risk here of of dying and what that means to me is again there is some sort of divine intervention that is taking place here because some sort of new beginning is being burdened by out by negative negative forces negative forces that somebody or something has been using i would say that is holding back a rebirth wow that just got so heavy um mm -hmm. uh, the bottom is the seven of cups four pentacles ace swords high priestess high priestess ace of swords four pentacles seven of cups <clears throat> I mean, there's only one truth. It's universal truth. And it's interesting because this, this four of pentacles is over here with this outside energy. It's, uh, it's containing itself for some sort of new beginning. For the mother and child, again, it's like for the mother and child. This, this, a wish, a dream. But then there's these illusions to push through. I would also say with the dragon, you know, there's, 
I just, I want to point the card to you because it's looking at me so intensely. The messages that it's conveying. So you feel the intensity of this. Um, it's like it sees right through you. It sees right through you. It sees right through me. It sees through everyone here. And it's honestly asking yourself too to not, if you're creating illusions, you know, if you're, if you're someone that is coming up on the negative end of this karma that's playing out here, um, make sure you understand what illusions you're placing in front of you because you will pave your own path to destruction. Like there's that kind of energy here. It's really, really intense. It's very, very quite intense. Um, so I'm going to go do the extended. In the extended, Scorpio, um, we are going to, the, all the underlying cards are getting sh shuffled back into these three decks. And I'm going to continue to use those three decks. And I'm going to use them to see where this energy, how it changes and progresses and transforms your energy, the energy outside of you, and what these two energies create. So basically just continue to pull cards off the same decks. Woo! Thank you so much, Scorpio. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.